for you to join over here. So uh, to start with my introduction, so my name is Naveen Aswani, and I'm the co-founder and data architect at Cloud Early. <clears throat> so for today's session, we would be uh, deep diving to the data cloud and its capabilities that Salesforce has recently introduced. So moving to next on uh, agenda for the day. So first of all, we'll uh, get to understand like why Salesforce to introduce data cloud, first of all. And to the next, we'll be moving into the introduction, like what is the overview of the data cloud and how uh, the power of data plus AI plus CRM. I mean, you have heard this terminology millions of times, I, mean, I guess for this year at least. So data plus AI plus CRM that we are going to decode each step. And the next is a uh, session for the topic is for data cloud in system landscape, which is very useful for the uh, architects who are going for the exam, maybe I would say. And the next will be the business use case, who all customers are opting for data cloud. And if it fits in your organization, we'll have a look into that. Next uh, would be the certification tips. So I have recently uh, cleared the certification for data cloud. So over the session, maybe I'll be giving you my tips, uh, the scenarios, what I saw in that exam. And in the, in the section, I'll be sharing you a few of the QR codes in which uh, there would be uh, the data cloud material from where you can learn data cloud and give up attempt for the certification. And rest assured, like, at the end of the session, you would be cleared with all the terminologies that you can come across while you're studying in the data cloud. So it will be easy for you to prepare for your exam. So no need to give a second thought, okay, what is this keyword? What was that? And so on. And last, uh, uh, we'll be demonstrating uh, data like in the, in the data cloud environment, how we need to create a data, how we can create a data stream, I would say, to do the further analysis or to get the insights of data. Okay, to start with, uh, why Salesforce Data Cloud? So we all know that uh, we have already a Salesforce product known as CDP, Customer Data Platform. I'm not sure if you heard it, but it is a part of Marketing Cloud, first of all. Even if we had that, Salesforce came up with Data Cloud, we'll explore more. Also, we also you know that there are few transactional databases, transactional data warehouse, data lakes, I would say. We already had that, but even then, uh, Salesforce introduced the data cloud. So I would be going through one by one, like why there was a need of Salesforce data cloud. So the main unique feature, I would say that uh, scalability and flexibility. So you might be having your transaction database, which can do uh, connect with various data source, get the data in real time, just apply a skill and you'll be getting the data. But the only thing in Salesforce Data Cloud is the scalability and flexibility. Now we all know we are working at the customer side. We have uh, requirements on a daily basis. The requirements are getting changed on a daily basis, I would say. So the data infrastructure should be so flexible or scalable that if there is a change, it should not be a problem for the customer to make a change on that infrastructure. So the data cloud is having a good scalability and flexibility according to its infrastructure and the architecture. We'll again deep dive into that. The next is unified customer view. Unified customer view, again, you'll be hearing this term unified unification identity multiple times in this course. So unification is basically, suppose if I am a lead, I'm coming uh, to the customer from via a marketing campaign, or maybe I'm coming from uh, sales cloud. So I'll be lead from a multiple data, not a data, but from a multiple clouds, I would say. So to unify in the data cloud, I won't be considered as a sim sim different customers. I would be a unified as a single profile, as a single identity in the end of the data set that I'll be creating. So it will avoid duplication of data and so on. Next is the collaboration. So as now customer has started opting clouds, different clouds, sales cloud, service cloud, marketing experience, and so on. So it should not be the case that uh, you are purchasing another warehouse, another data lake, and then on that you are doing uh, integration, sending data out of Salesforce to data warehouse, doing some analytics, advanced analytics and data lake, I would say, and then throwing back that data in, again into Salesforce. So that integration that you can save because in data cloud, it can connect all the clouds into one in data cloud itself. Fourth is uh, 
okay so one more thing i need to highlight so these terminology of data warehouse data lakes i'll be clearing out in the next slides and uh, i'll give you what's on that so in the, in the fourth is the customer data platform is not equal to data cloud because the salesforce has already product of customer data platform which is already like it's it's almost focusing on marketing side itself there is no other cloud related to the customer data platform but not in case of uh, data cloud in data cloud we have multiple clouds which will unify a data in a single cloud as i said earlier and next thing is the zero data copy architecture in zero data co copy architecture is basically uh, as i said in i have given the example on the unification so it won't create duplicates of data it will just create a unique copy of your data and keep it as it is but not in case of cdp in cdp you can expect there would be a duplication of data and it's not that by introducing data cloud now salesforce will be getting rid of cdp cdp would be still there it will be readily available you can purchase on that as well but those are having only features limited to marketing cloud so these were the points why salesforce came up with a uh, data cloud as a new cloud to get it introduced in all the clouds that we have currently uh moving to next i just added this quote so uh, it should not be uh, only a raw data that we need to provide it to a customer so data should give some meaningful meaningful insights some actionable insights and everything to make a data driven decision it should not be the case like you are just overwhelmed with the data and you are not doing anything so it should be structured it should be uh, in a unified ma manner that it should be clean and it should not be giving you false results and according to that you are making the business decision so that should not be the case so this was about like why data cloud and about why we need a clean data why we need a good quality data in which we can do the analytics and stuff moving to next uh, the topic of the hour is what is data cloud now we are going, we are going to jump into the data cloud like what uh features that data cloud is having what is the architecture behind it where it is hosted and we'll we'll see the live demo as well of particular data cloud okay so this slide is my personally favorite slide so it will just sum up like what is data cloud actually so data cloud is nothing but a combination of data warehouse plus data lake which comes up to us data lake host now to decode what is data warehouse data warehouse is nothing but you can consider as a structured data so you would be creating a data warehouse to like to input all the data sources you have in across your organization i would say suppose you have excel sheets you have uh, any other system like microsoft dynamics you have salesforce you have uh, uh, if you have a etl tool informatica and that will be a middleware but if you want to get a structured data you would be putting that into a data warehouse as a structured data data lake would be structured plus unstructured data so in data lake you can just add files as well you can add uh, if you have images files videos and everything so that you can put into a data lake which will be considered as structured plus unstructured data so the difference between data warehouse and data lake is only a concept of analytics so in data warehouse you can do just analytics query it to the visualization and that's it but in data lakes you can do advanced analytics you can do predictions and yeah so the power of both data warehouse and data lake is now into the data cloud that is also termed as data lake house wherever you will see the terminology like data lake house would be a combination of both data warehouse and data lake and the add on feature is that act on data so once you have that final data set you can act on that data in data lake house in the, in, in data cloud i would say so on, in 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 act on data that would be suppose if you night if you are writing a flow for example in salesforce you can use that final output of that data cloud into your flow and do the action accordingly so we'll deep dive into more uh, detailed process of data cloud like how we need to start from identifying data source to uh, connect the data source whatever we have in the organization so that's our next segment of harnessing the power of data ai and crm 
So these are the six steps. So this is a backbone, I would say, of data cloud. Backbone, the architecture, you would say. So this is what the data cloud is. So the first step is to identify the data source, which you can see it over here in the first batch and streaming. Whatever the data would be, if it is from MuleSoft, if it is, if it is in your personal, some uh, on-premises data, or if it's in the Excel sheet, in any cloud, you can just need to identify the what are the data sources. Connect is basically you have readily connectors available in data cloud. You just need to click on that and take all the data. And in, in, in this, I need to highlight, you can get data from mobile and web APIs as well. So it's not that it's not customizable. So you can customize and you can get the data wherever you need from and just connect the data. Third step is harmonize. So there would be, uh, there's a concept of data modeling as we all know. So we need to data model each and every attributes i would say so we need to connect all the attributes in a single data set to get a final outcome of that combinations that we are doing so kind of a etl you can imagine fourth is unify as i said unify unification identity and this these are all the same terminology so as data is coming from multiple sources there are high chances that uh, the lead might be coming from various sources but we need to just consider only one time it's not that if I'm uh, approaching a business from three multiple sources, I'll be getting three times data in the end. So we need to unify the data. Unify, basically in, in data cloud, we have a concept of uh, unification uh, set rules. So we need to define our rules on that. And once we'll create a rule, it will automatically unify. So we need to make sure that rules are stricter enough that it should uh, identify that, okay, this three leads are same. So it should be coming only one time. Next is uh, the analysis and predict. So this is the analytics and predictions that we can do once we have that data. And the next part is on the segment and analyze. So segmentation is basically if you want to focus for a particular region, if you want to focus for a particular audience, so we'll be doing the segmentation. And last would be we can do action on the data as I said. So I've just given a highlight of data warehouse, data lake, and data lake house. That means uh, till here, any data warehouse can do this thing. Like they, you can connect the data from different sources and you can do the ETL transformations, anything, and you can get the unified data. So that uh, any data warehouse can do. Unify is basically in Salesforce data cloud. They have given a part of configuration. But in traditional data warehouse, you need to do a coding, you need to do the customization. But in data cloud, you'll be uh, you'll be getting a UI screen and you can just write the rules to define it for the unification. And next is data lake. So data lake also can uh, be doing till here, I would say. They can segment and you can analyze the data uh, starting from the connection, identify data source and everything. But the uh, unique part of uh, data lake is uh, these actions. So actions, activations, flow, and export. So we'll be going through these topics one by one uh, in the future slides. So, so this is how there is a difference between data warehouse, data lake, and data lake house. So we'll be going through one by one uh, each step. To start with is the identified data sources. So you have multiple data sources. Just identify those what data you need to bring in so you can see there are apis sdks any device it mentioned and there would be a crm data and mute stuff so you can get identify those data the, those data and we can just do a readily connect which the readily connectors that are available so step two will be the out of the box connectors that we have in salesforce so i'll be showing you in the demo as well so it will give you a clear understanding. So we need to identify, we need to connect with the data source. You can connect with other Salesforce instance as well. So you'll be getting a connector over here. And the third thing would be the mapping. As I said, the third is harmonized. So this is kind of an ETL tool. We need to make join for each attribute that is coming from out, uh, that is coming from different data source. In the final, uh, I would say data set. Data set is basically the final output that we'll be getting. So uh, we need to just map all the uh, attributes and then we'll be good to go to the unification part. 
So unification here is a simple example that I have given. So for example, a customer Tom Jackson is coming from one source and also is the same customer. He has mentioned his name as Thomas Jackson, but as you can see, the email ID is same. So we can write that identif identification unification logic as we can check on the email ID. If email ID is same, that means the customer is same. So as a unified individual, it will create only one record. It won't allow uh, to get two records in the final data set. So in this way, we can achieve the unification. And the next is final. When we get the final data set, it will be, uh, we need to, if we need to analyze, we need to do the visualization. Like Tableau is one of the tool that is now embedded in uh, data cloud. So on home screen of your data cloud, you will be getting an actual Tableau desktop screen in which you can do the visualization. So nothing to go outside anywhere. You will be getting the whole package into a data cloud itself. And last but not the least, so act on data. So it's not just about doing the analysis and predictions, but if you want to act on data, if you want to use any attributes that has been driven from that flow into your, into your flow, so that you can uh, easily use it to your flows or apics anywhere in the activations as well. So this was all about uh, the process, the six steps process that you need to do to get the final outcome of the data. So I would be stretching more on the act on data. So as we know that the main feature of this that we can act on data is basically you can segment it. Segmentations is basically you can divide your audience into subparts. For example, these are the audience who uh, I would say if they are making a purchase on a seasonal basis, or maybe these are the customers who are making purchase on a location basis, or these are the cases in which they are really active on the email or maybe on the mobile mobile. Phone. So you can write the segmentation group. And accordingly, you can activate those. So once that segmentation is active, they would be receiving maybe a marketing campaign, you would say, or maybe for a personal use, we need to, you need to analyze like which product they're opting for. So the segmentation is a part that it will be just, you don't need to analyze the whole large amount of data. It will be just in the segmentation part. So this is a segmentation for one of the uh, act on data part. Next is insights. So insights are really important. Like if it is a raw data, as I shown you earlier, so if it is a raw data, it's of no use actually. So calculated insight, there are two types of insight. First of all, the first is the calculated insight that you can create. So in this, uh, you would be creating an insight. You'll be writing a rules on whole set of your information, whatever the metrics that are available. So these are use case, I would say. So these calculated insights are used for customer lifetime value. So customer lifetime value is basically if you need to see uh, which of your customer has been uh, doing business and uh, for how long of time. So this will give like if we need to focus on that customer or not. And the next is recency, frequency and monetary. Recency is basically how long ago a customer has made a purchase frequency like how frequently the customer is making the purchase and monetary like how profitable that customer was so these kind of insights we need to create to understand okay so this is the customer i need to focus on we can just uh, go behind them to get the more opportunities actually next is the affinity score affinity score is like uh, personally how confident are you that customer will buy that particular product if you're into like real estate, you know that customer or usually prefers on buying an apartment. So you can just reach out to them showing the apartment only, not that you're showing them the villas or townhouses. It's just a one use case for the real estate. Same goes for like in here in uh, UAE, we have a concept of free zone. So in free zone as well, which uh, type of product that they're opting for to register the business. So you'll be getting understanding, okay, we need to go behind them and just show them those products which they are entertaining them. So this was about the calculated in insights. The next is streaming insights. Streaming insight is nothing, but I'll be, I'll be giving you one example that you'll be easily understand. 
So in financial service or in stock market, we need the real-time data to act accordingly. Or maybe uh, you might all be using Amazon, so you are doing the live chat. So to get uh, the insights like how that su support representative is performing on a real-time basis if he's attending it correctly or not. So this would be a streaming insights that you can uh, keep on getting over the course of duration whenever you will start doing the insight analysis. So these were the act on data for uh, segmentation and uh, the insights part. So uh, there would be a difference uh, for the segmentation insight and also there is the concept of formulas. So formulas is nothing but if you need to filter out or maybe if you need to filter only at a row based downstream. So uh, at a row level, you just need a customer based out of UE, for example. So we'll be just applying the formulas. There's nothing that you need to uh, segment it. Segmentation, you'll be doing it when you need to create multiple combinations of formulas, I would say. Like you need to segment based on region, again, uh, based on the uh, audiences as well, like which audience are buying at a seasonal time only. So we need to segment those in a different way. And calculated insight is, again, you need to take a chunk out of data and make sense out of those large scale behavioral data it's uh, it's different from segmentation because in this you will be uh, taking insight out of those what is the outcome and to get the final verdict like okay the customer is of this nature for example so uh, the customer would be buying okay, only on this product and then we'll be reaching out to them at a certain period of time so this was uh, the difference between formula segmentation and insights. Moving to next, uh, so this is the concept of data spaces. I would say this is uh, one of the tip I can give. So there are many questions around data spaces uh, in the certifications. So uh, basically data spaces are nothing but you would be creating a separate spaces. I would say brand wise, so suppose uh, Amazon is one of the e-commerce customers. So they need to do a separate analysis for each brand. It's not that they would be doing uh, analysis of, for example, if I few company names for Shoemaker, like Nike, Reebok, and Adidas, they, would, they won't be doing analysis for all three together. They need to understand who are the audience for each brand. So they need to create data space and only on those data space, they would be doing the analysis according to brand, according to region, according to the according to the department, what they are from. So it will be very helpful to create the data space individually for them. So, uh, yep. So this, uh, this was the concept of the data spaces. So as you can see in data spaces, there are few terminology that uh, we have already covered, like segmentation, insights, identities, nothing but unification. So these concepts, uh, which will connect to our next topic, is uh, the different modeling. So the backend of Data Cloud, uh, there is like we have a standard object, custom object in Salesforce instance. But in case of Data Cloud, we have different uh, terminologies to use this. So in our next segment, I'll be uh, showing you the difference, like what is data model object, what is data lake object, and these are again data lake object. So moving to next is our data cloud modeling and also how the flow architecture is like how the data is flowing on the backend with the hosted platform as well. So this is a part of data modeling. So how it works is so uh, first, these are the data sources, all the data sources that are coming. Uh, one data sources can have multiple tables, object you can consider as table, which will uh, be stored in the data stream objects. So data stream object is the entry point. Data stream object is the first point in which the data would be coming in data cloud. So this whole set of data stream object is termed as data streams, which would be having uh, all kind of data, like structured, unstructured, whatever the data would be. Next, the data stream object would be linked with data lake object. Like you can see, uh, so there's nothing different as such in these two, but it's just that it's a, it is just that it is a data lake house. So in, in data lake house, we usually 
stored the data in data lake objects. The terminology may be uh, confusing, but this would be the step starting with data streams, then data lake, and then the third would be data mapping. So these are the DMOs as we term in the technical language. So data model objects would be the final thing in which we will be doing the mapping. The data might be scattered, so you need to map it somewhere. You need to give them the endpoint, uh, like if you need to give a uh, label change, API name change. So the final everything you'll be doing in uh, after this step and you'll be getting the final uh, mapping data over here and that again will be splitted into standard dmo dmo as i said is a data mapping object and the second will be the custom data mapping object and here you will define uh, how the relationship is like if it is many to one one to one there might be one account multiple opportunities so here you need you don't need to write any uh, SQL, it will be just a uh, point and click. You just need to define a relationship. Like these are the two uh, attributes and these are with one-to-one uh, -one or many-to-many -many relationship, that's it. So this is our final step of getting the data mapping. Uh, and then on that, you can do segmentation. As I said, you can write identification rules and uh, analyze, predict, whatever you want to do in the end of the DMO. So this is on the data modeling side. Coming to our data flow, like how the data is flowing, starting from the data sources. So uh, over here, you can see that there's a lake house from where we are inputting all the data. So data lake is nothing but your data cloud. Lake house is nothing but your data cloud. And uh, over here, there are few of the hosted platform listed. So Apache Spark is one of them, which uh, you can uh, consider Apache Spark as to ingest the data into your lake house. So that is a very good uh, hosted platform, I would say, on the data cloud, because it can just huge amount of data. You can ingest like trillions, millions, whatever the data is, it can, uh, ingest it seamlessly so there won't be an issue and uh, there is one more over here as a uh, try trino trino is one of the again uh, sql query engine uh, design to query a large data set so to query large data set so that is also posted on the data lake post and you can query a large amount of data over here coming to next these are the few other platforms on which the data cloud is hosted Parkit is actually a columnar storage, columnar storage, and Iceberg is a table abstraction. The reason for this hosted platform is because uh, Salesforce is uh, will be storing the data in a tabular format, tabular as in in the object format. We need a structured data. So to store, so to get this in a tabular format, we use Iceberg and Parkit, which will be your uh, cloud table. And then from there, you can be using Spark Trio to query that table, or maybe you can use data frames. Data frames is again a concept of framing the data, creating frames, creating data spaces. So this is all the library which you'll be using it from the data cloud, cloud table. So this was uh, an uh, added uh, architecture with the platform information as well. So more information on the technical capabilities, I would say. So uh, technical capabilities as in what other uh, hosted platforms are there. So for storage, here you can see uh, AWS S3 is there. So here it is uh, an icon for that. Likewise, we have uh, Amazon Redshift as well. So accordingly, it is given the mapping like for each step for big data processing. What are the hosted platform in the back end for data connectors? What connections we are using for transformations for ETLs? What we have in the back end? So, and in the end, in the, in the real time, the to get the queries from the back end again. So, we have a different query engine that you can process the data in the end, and that is linked with your Lightning platform. So, as I said, the outcome you can easily use in your Lightning platform and do stuff on that and visualizations or maybe activations activations is nothing but once you create the segment you just need to activate it because on a monthly basis suppose if you want to send an email to the customers 
uh, on a certain on, of a fixed audience that you have created on that segments. So you need to activate that, and it will be just running a batch on a daily, on a weekly, or whatever you will be scheduling accordingly. So uh, till then, it was our uh, technical stuff. I would say on the data cloud, what is in the back end, what is in the UI side, what you what you can see in the data cloud as a capabilities. Next is uh, how data cloud will look in system landscape. So as I said, there is an integration with, not integration, but there is a link uh, in the backend architecture with all the clouds. Like I moved to the uh, system landscape. So our data cloud resides over here, which would be having uh, the trusted infrastructure. So this is, uh, I would say hyperforce, which is, upcoming from Salesforce. So if you have a data residency requirement, so it will be uh, over here below the data cloud. And this would be uh, connected with the Einstein generative AI stack. So this is, and again, Einstein one platform, which was recently introduced. So this would be having a direct connection and all the customer 360 app, like sales cloud, service cloud, experience cloud, Tableau, anything would be connected with your uh, Einstein generative AI pack. So this is also a trusted layer. So uh, uh, so there is no need to uh, think on the security part of it. So your first of all, the data is residing in your country itself now with the hyperforce. And also there is a trusted layer of Einstein. So no need to worry on the security part as well. And uh, yep, and that would be finally would be connected with all the clouds that you have purchased. For your organization so this was on the uh, i would say system landscape how the data cloud is fit in so moving to next so suppose if a customer is having a uh, multiple uh, salesforce instance i would say uh, one instance is in some other another country one instance is in in their home country maybe so uh, there would be a different salesforce production in, in instance so where we need to install or where we need to uh, opt this data cloud, like in which org we need to do it. So the next uh, part is the consideration that we need to do for data cloud in our multi-org, like in, if, it, if it is a multi-org. So uh, here's one example. Uh, so for example, in this, we have two Salesforce instance. One is in South Korea, which are managing leads and cases and one instance is in Germany. So the question arises: like, where do we need to uh, uh, get the data cloud? In which org we need to get the data cloud? So uh, that actually depends on uh, multiple factors. So I would say data residency would be the primary one. So for example, in this case, the Germany uh, doesn't want to go that data outside of Germany. So that's why it will be uh, posting data cloud over here because South Korea is fine if their data is going out of it. So uh, in South Korea, they would be just uh, using a CRM connector, which is readily available again in data cloud. We'll fetch all the data over here and create the first step is data streams, I'd say. So they'll be creating data streams and data lake object, model object, or spaces if required for the analysis. So the first consideration you need to make sure is data residency, where the data should be there. Second is, this is a hub and spoke model. So there would be a central hub. You need to define which org would be a central hub. It depends on which is the primary data source as well. So suppose in, in Germany, the org is the primary data source. So you need to make that primary source of data cloud as well. And also you need to align with overall strategy, like how the business are going to uh, do the collaboration strategy with other countries. So that would define, and also the con consideration of uh, data ownership. So who is going to account the ownership of data and how the governance structure is of that data. So all these factors would define that, where do you need to get your data cloud in which instance? So uh, yeah, this was on the, uh, let's say architecture side of it, like where data should be there, technical landscape and everything. Next is, uh, do you really need a data cloud in your business currently? 
So listed down few of the uh, factors, but there it can be many actually. So few of them, if your current, if, if your customer is, has already opted for a warehouse or a data lake, but it is not flexible enough or scalable enough. And if it is not acting as a single source of truth, I mean, in that, again, there is a data which is not uh, useful or we are not getting a business driven decision out of it. So we need to opt out from there. You can consider data cloud. And it is, as I said, if the existing is not scalable or flexible. So if, if, if there is any change in the requirement, if, it, if there's any change from the business side, and it is taking time to you make any changes in your existing data warehouse or data lake, then you can switch into data cloud because it is quite flexible and scalable. And if you know if you need to do a enhanced marketing campaign, so marketing campaigns again as I highlighted, segmentation is one of the feature, or insights are there, and uh, the calculated insights you need to get the customer value and so on. So to get that experience to get the marketing campaigns to grow in terms of business, to get more customers, you can think of uh, data cloud. And fourth point is, uh, suppose if your data is residing outside Salesforce, uh, even if uh, there are multiple clouds like sales cloud, service cloud, and it is residing outside Salesforce, and you need to, uh, <clears throat> you know, you need to reduce that uh, time between the transaction time between the other system and Salesforce, and uh, get the data on premises on premises as in the cloud itself but for the data cloud then it would be a good option to opt for this data cloud next uh just a business use case where currently uh this data cloud has been used so there are a few financial services which are using this uh, to detect the fraudulent transactions at a real time as i shown you there is a streaming api in which you can uh, quickly identify okay this is some uh, fishy thing is happening i would say and uh, that you need to uh, take action and stop that suspicious behavior right away in healthcare uh, so the churn rates the risk of uh, churn i would say so if a provider is with the greater efficiency in <clears throat> across the multiple channels so you need to get the data cloud to identify like how the patient health is there so on a real time again on a real time basis there are few use cases where this data cloud would be uh, beneficial for retail and consumer goods as i said the amazon uh, the e-commerce websites are uh, using this data cloud at the moment to get the real time engagement uh, starting from sales to their service process as well and media and communication so <clears throat> <clears throat> so this would be uh, an upsell channel by having a shared customer 360 view across your subscription management. So uh, for the media and communication, the data cloud is uh, good to go. So uh, this was all about uh, on the presentation side. Uh, moving to next, I would be showing you a quick demo of uh, data cloud in the data cloud instance itself. So. Uh, Next would be coming to the demo side of it, of uh, Salesforce. Just give me a moment. I need to just uh, switch the screens. Okay, so uh, to start with, I just wanted to show you uh, once you opt for data cloud, you would be having a added permission set assignment as data cloud admin. And also the license assignment would be coming under uh, customer data platform CDP as you said. So this, these are the additional permissions that you would require to enable the data cloud. And just to highlight, so this instance I got recently in Dreamforce. So I was the one who got this uh, data cloud environment to look around, to play around, to have POCs and everything. So if if you if you need to opt for it, I guess you need to be in touch with the uh, Salesforce team. And uh, for North America and EMEA, I guess it is readily available. You can go for it and uh, have a look into the data cloud. And if not, if someone is interested, just reach out to me. We can I can uh, help you with the uh, 
uh, the stream for this and uh, you can have a look around. So once the data cloud is activated uh, from the app launcher itself, you would be seeing the data cloud and you can see it's completely different with our normal sales and service uh, cloud that we have in Salesforce. So as I said, to start with, uh, we need to uh, start with the entry point that is data streams. So uh, data streams would be the entry point to identify a data source. Suppose if we have the data sources ready, we just need to create a stream first of all. So I'll be showing you the steps because this was a shared doc. So there are few things uh, which are not available right now. So there might be few issues, but I would be closing this end-to-end uh, -end data stream, like how to create a data stream. I'd be showing in this demonstration. So on click of new data stream, you can see there would be uh, connected sources, connected source as in CRM the, uh, in, on which this is hosted right now. And there would be other uh, clouds as well if you wanted to see, like that would be in the paid, that would be in the whole version, I would say. Like if your customer is opting for, you can be seeing more uh, Salesforce instances over here. Other sources like Amazon S3 is a primary one, but if you have any other data source, you can just uh, just click on that and readily connect with uh, the data source. <clears throat> so just uh, highlighting you all the sources that are available. But to start with, we would be going with our Salesforce CRM. And we'll click on next. So here it will show uh, two bundles. As I said, it's a free org. So here you won't be able to see all the bundles, all the bundles as in if there are any other process of marketing cloud or experience cloud, if in that experience cloud we are using specific objects, that objects you can see over there. But for now, we are just demonstrating for sales org. And here you can see the three uh, accounts have been included. But if you, include, if you need to include more accounts, you can just go over here and you can just keep on adding whatever, whatever accounts that you need to show. So we'll be just uh, showing as a sales and we'll be doing next. Here, uh, as I said, it is uh, a free org. So there would be an issue if I click over here as next, but I'll be just showing you the gist of it. And you can see over here, like which all uh, column names that you need to select. You can just select and select whatever you need to do. Same goes with account object, same goes with account object and contact object. Whatever uh, columns that you need, you can take only those columns. So if you need to uh, get a good uh, responsive time, if you need a good ETL, should be run faster. So just select only those columns which are required for your final analysis. So it could be a best practice. And you need to select the data space as well if there is any. So. Uh, this would be a part of creating a new data stream. I'll just close it because uh, it has already been created. So as I, as I shown you, there were three objects, account, contacts, and leads. So these three objects uh, would be the data streams considered as data streams, which will eventually merge into data model as far as the, if you, if you remember that data modeling diagram. So in the end, this, these were the combination in the data mod, in the data mapping side. So we'll just quickly, I'll show you, like suppose this is a data stream of my lead. And uh, here, if you need to create a new field, for example, if you need to focus on a certain region, so we can create a formula field over here. So I'll just click a uh, formula field and uh, just give uh, suppose a lead is coming from UAE. So give if UAE based lead. So the field name would be UAE based API name and return type be selecting as text. And then we'll be writing uh, formulas. So if I write formulas, for example, if I go with if conditions, I'll uh, apply this function that. I need to write a formula that if lead is from UE based. So we need to check on the attribute where we are storing the country name. So if I go over here, okay, so we have got the country field. So just remove this condition and add it as a country. So you can see you will be getting a source field as country. 
and we'll be writing a string that if it is ue then result as true or it will be false so here is our formula ready then uh, you can search for it i mean we need to make sure that whatever you are writing over here it should be there so suppose if i write india over here and test it will give us false if i write us it will give false so only if it will be coming under a ua region it will give the output as true i'll just copy this because this we would be using in the mapping site so this is a formula that we have created and once you click save you will be able to see uh, we have created a ue based formula that we are going to use on the mapping side so the next is the data model side because we need to map uh, that field that we have got it, that we have written it just now so if i go over here uh, the data model object for the mapping i'll just edit this and here we would be writing and add field because we need to add that field that we have created just now so i copied this is ue based and we would be selecting it as a text so once you save this so this was a part of mapping and when when i go to the data lake object and again if i check the my lead step so i go over here so you can see the field that we created just now would be is ue based would be in the data lake object so in the final data set you would be getting a readily available formula that you can use it for your uh, analysis suppose you will need to focus only leads of ue based so you can just filter it out and you can do the actions accordingly so very small example for data streams so uh, there are more to explore in this so identity resolution set rule set that i said so as it is a free org but we cannot do more on this so we can write uh, identity resolution rules over here there would be calculated insights there would be actions if you need to create actions are again uh, data action targets there are few certification like in the, in the exam you would be getting a questions around data action or targets so these are usually applied on data spaces as i showed you the concept of data space you need to create uh, data brand wise region wise so you can perform a uh, data actions according to the spaces so yep this was all about uh, the demo part of it i'll switch back to our presentation give me a moment We had a question in the Q&A section. Yep. yep. Uh, it's from Adarsh, um, and he asked, can Data Cloud deal with non-structured data via data streams? Yes, it can. So as I explained earlier, so I'll just go to that slide as well. Just give me a moment. Uh, my screen is visible right yes okay so as i said uh, so data lake house is having a capabilities of data warehouse plus data lake so data lake uh, would be storing the uh, data of structured and unstructured both so yes to answer your question it would be storing data in your data stream both structured and unstructured Okay. Uh, anybody, any questions?
Okay, uh, moving to next, I'll just conclude this uh, PPT. So, uh, so the final outcome that we are going to get uh, once all has been done, the six steps that I shown you. So the final outcome would be, you can see something like this. To go to a particular contact, you can see lifetime value. You can see more information uh, would be on this purchase, engagement score and everything. And you can do the analytics as well. As I said, we have a Tableau embedded in this so Tableau desktop screen, which uh, you can uh, do to, to use for the analytics and also the discovery part. Discovery part is basically for the AI and predictions. So uh, this was it. Uh, so the next, as I said, I would be sharing you the tips I just shared. So few more tips. It would be the questions would revolve around the single org and multi org strategies, where the data would be fit, where the data cloud would be would be installing it in which org, and uh, few other would be on the terminologies like on the data lake object, then a data model object or data stream objects. Few questions would be around this, and these are the two uh, trail mix the data cloud trail mix, and this is one of the video series that. Uh, I used as a study preparation for some preparation. So uh, these were very helpful. And yeah, uh, I guess this deck would be uploaded somewhere. So you can reach out to team or you can reach out to me. I can show you, I can share you this deck. And uh, last, thank you so much for listening. Uh, and uh, again, the QR code is for my LinkedIn. You can reach out to me if you have any questions and uh, for now as well, if you have any question, we can uh, go through that or we can conclude. There's one more question from uh, Mohammed Umar Azmi. Uh, he asks, what are the prerequisites to learn data cloud? And is there any quick use case you can discuss uh, data cloud capabilities in sales cloud? For sales cloud, uh, I would say the journey of leads so, uh, so if you're getting n number of leads, I mean, uh, from different sources, and you need to analyze in a structured way, it it is not that uh, you'll be getting uh, clean uh, data from the lead. Suppose if it is coming from uh, web to lead or somewhere from some some different sources, first uh, you need to cleanse those lead and to see how to convert that lead into account and contact. So first you need to win that lead first. So uh, for sales, I can think of this and also for the opportunity, like how likely is that opportunity going to closed one? So this would be a use case for a predictions. So suppose an opportunity is coming into your system. You do all those six steps in your data cloud. Now, in the end, you need to you need to do the predictions like, okay, should I uh, go behind this opportunity or not? So that AI use case, what Data Cloud will do, it will do a historical analysis, like how the trend is going with this similar opportunity, and then if that opportunity was closed one or not. So with that, you can get the predictions like how likely your opportunity would be going closed one. It's one of the use cases that I can think of. Those were the questions that we got from Q&A. If okay. anybody has any questions, you can reach out to Naveen. You can scan the QR code.